Hey, this is Mike and Tom with the Muscle and Speed Podcast. We're here to talk about our favorite car movies, TV shows, music, and workouts, wheeling, whatever else comes to our mind. We're going to be posting these up once a week. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube at Muscle and Speed. We also have a website, www.muscleandspeed.com. We'll eventually be selling some merch. Our goal here is to share our passion for all these things with the people who feel the same way. All right, we're back. How you doing, man? Doing good. How are you? Not bad. It's good to be home, although uh, I wish some of that San Diego weather had followed me. <laughs> uh, at least it's warm. It, it's warm. It, it's actually yeah. warmer here than it was in uh, San Diego. Oh, is that right? Yeah, San Diego, it's it's really not that warm there. I mean, it's um, 60s and 70s pretty much all year long. It gets into the 80s briefly in August, they say. Okay. But the main uh-huh. thing is it, the sun shines every day, and it's that Nothing temperature. Wrong with that? No, it was nice. <laughs> I bet you had a good time. Nice. So, um, we're doing good on our every Tuesday. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> Same as usual. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, what are you gonna do? It just gives us more to talk about, right? At each one. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I was looking uh, at that. The GT500 specs officially were released finally by Ford. No one's Whoa. driven it yet, still, but they've at least come out and said that it has 760 horsepower, 625 pound-feet of torque to back up its uh, claims of a three and a half second zero to sixty in a sub eleven second quarter. Nice. The well, most yeah. powerful Ford engine to date, correct? Yeah. Yep. That's the most powerful engine they've ever produced from the factory. I like it. Yes. Although, you know, they say that, but they have that uh, that Cobra Jet package that I thought that crate engine was more powerful. Of course, that's not a that's not a, a for sale to the public car. I mean, it kind of is, but I don't know. I don't yeah. know how they take care of that. <laughs> I don't know how they reason that out. Uh-huh. Either, but uh yeah i mean those are spectacular numbers but given the type of car the mustang has become and the fact that they put a dual clutch transmission in it (laughs) i gotta believe that the focus is going to be on um its track times yeah for sure it's cool that they've provided that info but of course what we really want to know is Will it beat the ZL1 1LE around a road course? Because it kind of has to, to uh-huh. be the big dog. Because the so that, guys have already the Mustangs, out. What's that? The Mustangs, still, um, they're still comparing with the Corvette then. They're well, not they're going to have to after next year, right? They're st- are they going to quit making the GT next year? They're going to quit making – well, yeah. The GT is going to get a – apparently Ford's claiming it's going out with a bang. So they're going to have a special edition Ford GT that's going to come out that's going to be by far the highest performing Ford GT they've ever released. Um, so over these past three years, that's going to make for one hell of a car because it was already one of the best performing cars in the world. So, um, uh, no, I meant the the Camaro going away. I just seen that in the news. Oh, yeah, I saw that too. 2023. <laughs> yep. Yeah, right. the, um, the Alpha platform that it shares with Cadillac is being discontinued, and they're moving to a new platform, and they're not moving the Camaro to it. Uh, so they're going to offer a Sport Traverse or something? Well, they have that stupid-looking SUV that kind of has a Camaro front end. Yeah. And I don't know if they think that's what people want. <laughs> 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 you know, um yeah, I, I guess the sales had already dipped. The Challenger beats it in sales now, so it was in a in a firmly in third place. So uh, oh, I know that's not something GM is very happy with. Mm-hmm. But I don't know why'd you make it so ugly? <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't, if you wanted to sell a lot of cars, why'd you make it so <laughs> ugly? Well, how was it to drive one? You just uh, rented one. Well, okay, I had a seventeen. 
which, in my opinion, the 2017 Camaro was the last good-looking Camaro. Okay. The 18 and the 19 are horrible. When the 18 got released, the outcry from the public, including GM's fan base, was so big, they restyled it again in 2019. <laughs> they made it mildly better, but it still sucks. I mean, it, it's still a, it's a really ugly car. I mean, and you know me, I I like most of these things. You know what I mean? I I, I know. <laughs> I don't have a, like this harboring hate for Camaro or or anything, but um, the eighteen and nineteen are ugly cars. They they I mean, as a car, I don't care that it's a you know it's a, still a great performer. You know, yeah. it still has a eight speed transmission. It's still got the you know four hundred and sixty horsepower, whatever it's got, four fifty five, I think, in the SS. It's still a great car as uh, as a performer, but as a car, as a piece of automotive art that you'd want to hang on to it's really ugly um, it's not quite pontiac aztec ugly but uh <laughs> it's getting there i think if you give gm's designers one more shot at it they can get it <laughs> yeah that's too bad yeah well they painted themselves into a corner in 2002 and they packed up their toys and went home and they've kind of done that now. Wow. You know. I know they're working really hard trying to get their aluminum truck platform out. You know, um, that's supposed to come out next summer. Um, yeah. So, I I don't know. Maybe they're just spread too thin and they just don't have any money to fix the problems they created with the Camaro. Yeah, uh, that could That'd be. That'd be my guess. It's too bad because Dodge is killing the, the Challenger. Let's be the third time the Camaro's gone away. Uh, second. 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 Yeah. And it's one of those things. Will it be permanent? Probably not, you know. But, you know, it's 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 too bad. It, it really is. Um, hopefully Ford keeps the hammer down on performance and innovation in the Mustang. It doesn't get lazy, you know. But uh, it's hard to say. Yeah. It, it, competition is nice. It really is. And it's... I've said all along the Challenger is kind of a its own thing. It isn't really a competitor to the Mustang and the Camaro. It's just a different car. Right. It's really big. <laughs> so it doesn't do any of those things that those cars those other cars do on a road course. I mean it's they're quick in their own right, but they are big boulevard bruisers. You know, they're yeah. meant to be big. They're very comfortable. You can drive it's them. It's nice they're home. like that because they were like that back in the 60s. Yeah. Like, they were bigger. Same concept. But I've oh. I've always said I think Dodge gets it when it comes to that stuff. You know, I mean, don't get me wrong. They still made the PT Cruiser. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and that thing sucks. Uh-huh. <laughs> but, you know, with the Challenger, Look at what they did. They came out, what, uh, 10 years ago now? I think it's been 10 years, maybe okay. 11. Um, they haven't really monkeyed with it. Minor uh, changes, all improvements, minor improvements over the years. They've evolved it over the years to a better car and a better muscle car and a better looking muscle car. They haven't screwed it up. Right. You know, and, and that's... Um, the Mustang, of course, made a massive leap from 2014 to 2015. Um, but I think that was an improvement, too. Um, well, one, it brought us to the GT350 and the upcoming GT500 that we have. So I think it's hard to argue that uh, the Mustang didn't take a massive leap forward when they made that change. And it's a really, really good-looking car, which is important. Well, put the Camaro out of business. Uh, again. <laughs> So you know what all you you know you're thinking this too, right? The Terminator Ford Cobra in 2003 scared GM into discontinuing the Camaro. Uh, Yeah. Is the 2020 (laughs) GT500 doing the same thing? I'll say yes. (laughs) I thought you might. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, that's a. That's a big deal, man. It's a it big is. deal to drop the Camaro again. Yep. <sighs> At least they have the Vets, though. Yeah, and the Vets an amazing car. It's going mid-engine. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, that's due out, what, in two, three weeks now? I think it's July 18th they're going to unveil the mid-engine Corvette. It'll be a hell of a car. I mean, uh, it is a hell of a car. Yep. But again, you know, I I hate to say this, but I was looking um, because uh, the 2005 Corvette, when that came out, everyone said that Chevy was trying to make the Corvette look like a Ferrari. And I could kind of see it, but kind of not. I was like, eh, you know, maybe a little. But, you know, I was looking at, uh, I was actually watching an episode of Jay Leno's Garage on YouTube because he has his own YouTube show as well. And he was reviewing a Ferrari 308 from the mid-80s, the Magnum style, but it was white. And I guess because it was white, it threw me off. But I'm looking at it, and I was also just perusing the want ads, Facebook Marketplace, and I came across a white 85 Corvette. And damned if they don't look familiar. <laughs> <laughs> 85 <laughs> there's some you know it's it's obviously different you know any uh, car guy can tell them apart immediately i'm not saying they cloned it but the circular tail lights yes the vets always had them but so is the ferrari and so you have that you have that black molding that runs right through the middle of the car all the way around ferrari had that so did the corvette yeah <laughs> And there's no reason for that to exist, so it was a weird body line to just throw on there. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> Maybe they are. <laughs> but I'll say they are. We'll say they are. Yeah. Why not? Why not? The caution to me is, in doing that, did you lose too much of what the car is? You know, like... There's lots of guys out there that want the bragging right to say that my car is the fastest car, this, that, or the other, right? Yep. But most of us with any sense know that speed is a speed is usually determined by money. <laughs> For you sure. can Yeah, I mean you, you throw some coilovers, some BC racing coilovers or some um K2s throw those on a Mustang or a Camaro or a Challenger, throw a supercharger on that engine. You know, there's lots of things in the aftermarket you can do to make them world-class handlers, world-class stopping. You can order huge bear brake or Willwood brake kits for them. Um, you know, all of them are capable of power in the eight, 900 realm. You know, it's, what do you want out of it? You know, and, and I think you have to be careful that you're not losing the essence of what made it cool in the first place. You know, and having a front engine rear drive car is cool. It, the, the way they handle, the way they interact. Yes, yeah. mid engine handles better. The weight transfer is better, but there's always going to be a faster car. You can't, you know, if you have a race team like Ferrari, Ferrari makes cars to go racing, right? Yep. They exist as a car company to fund their race teams. So what they do makes sense. That is not what GM does. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. They mostly build, in my opinion, crap. But I would also say that about the other car manufacturers. Most of what they build is crap. Yeah. You know, it's meant to make the cheapest car that will get someone to market to buy it. So whatever it will stand, right? So trucks these days are forty to a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> But obviously it's correct because yeah. they sell the crap out of them. Exactly. <laughs> so um, there's that. It's just I don't know what what GM's thinking with this stuff. You know, you kind of lose what the car is, and you do kind of look like, and if you look at the renderings of the mid-engine Corvette, man, it looks a lot like that, four, uh, that new 488 Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> And here's the thing, it could, it will, I'm sure, it's going to perform really well. It's going to be a fraction of the cost of a Ferrari, and no one's going to give a shit. Right. They're still going to buy a bet. Right. Yep. It's just, you didn't need to do that. Right. <laughs> and God knows how much went into R&D to make that happen. You know, uh, I think there was pressure from a certain group probably their privateers, you know, their race teams that, uh, you know, work with them. They wanted that competitive edge, you know, to go road racing. And so that's kind of cool. 
but also because the way the rule systems work, also unnecessary. Yeah. Um, look what just happened to the Ford GT. Ugh. That is the biggest bunch of crap. Yep. <laughs> and you know, like I said, I'm not necessarily a Ford guy, but when you see crap like that, bullshit like that, y- you have to call it out. Mm-hmm. That was, uh, those cars were taken apart piece by piece and inspected twice prior to racing. Every single one of them. Yep. Heat expansion in the race caused those tanks to swell to a fractional percentage size larger than before the race. Who cares? Did uh, you yeah. check every single car at the track that day? Because yep. I bet you there's other ones that had the same problem. Uh huh. But you know they didn't. Right. Because <laughs> it would take too long. It would take too much money. It would cause too much strife. And so... They catered to a few people, a few whiners, a few crybabies who couldn't compete and uh, took care of them, you know, and they screwed over those Ford teams. And it really pisses me off because you had a privateer win, and that is such a big deal. It is. It really is. You know, for people who don't know, that means a group of buddies, basically. We'll call it that. It's like me and Tom buying a Ford GT, gutting it, and making it legal to race. That's what happened, and they won Le Mans. <laughs> that's insane. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what racing should be about. That's what, you know, I was watching that uh, roadkill where Mike Finnegan had purchased a 69, was it a 60, yeah, 69 uh, Charger. Char- oh, yeah, the one that was going to be used in NASCAR. Yeah, that guy uh-huh. built it. It was legal. It passed yeah. to race in NASCAR. Yep. That is amazing. He built that in his barn. Exactly. <laughs> That's what racing should be. Ultimately, even at the top level, a couple of losers like us should be able to go get a car and go race. And you shouldn't, if you pass tech twice, run a race to its fullest, you should not get screwed at the end of that race. Well, not something for a fuel cell. Right. And did they, if they had finished sixth, would they have been DQ'd? Right. They no. Won't. no one would have looked and no one would have cared. Yeah. The fact of the matter is the Corvette teams and the Porsche teams threw a fit because they got slaughtered. Yeah. That's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> Every single Ford GT finished in the top ten. That's a big deal, especially <laughs> given the fact that they have constantly cut the GT's power. They have constantly added weight to it. So Every year. Have, Every year, so that every the Corvette year. and Porsche could be competitive with it. Yep. I hate that crap. <laughs> and that's the thing that kills racing. You know, that's where you lose your fans. That's where people just lose interest. You know, you. You know, I, I don't know. It's it's just a it's a shame. It's a shame. For uh, that privateer team, for Chip Ganassi and his race teams. Um, they asked him if he had to, if he wanted to make a statement about it. And he said, no, we won that race and everybody knows it. Yeah. And he let it go. Yep. <laughs> they said, he goes, you're not going to appeal it. He goes, no, why? Everybody knows we won. Yep. These guys will have an asterisk next to their win for the rest mm-hmm. of their lives. And everyone's going to know it was bullshit. Yep. <laughs> and they will know it. It's too bad. That's the kind of thing that just it it kills me, man. Yeah. I can't stand that crap. <laughs> yep. But I don't know. I can't get that uh that R code Fairlane off my mind. That's pretty crazy, or uh, Galaxy. Sorry. The one you just yeah, the one you just showed me. Yeah, the one I just showed you. Yeah, I know. That's, that must uh, be a 63 and a half. Yeah, I like that. It's the best color, too. Mm-hmm. Right? Black car, red interior. <laughs> yeah, black, red interior, 427 four-speed. Of course, the engine's gone. Of course. Of course. Someone robbed it. Yep. For something. But to the person who did that, shame on you. And here's why. <laughs> I don't care what you put it in. It's not as valuable as that Galaxy would be. No. I don't care what you did with it. You could put it in a 67 Mustang Fastback 
it's still not as valuable as a 63 Galaxy R code with its original engine and transmission. So right. that's a big fat fail on their part. Yep. <laughs> But yeah, that's kind like of that so car. Cool. We should What's probably that? get that car. We should probably get it. Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, the thing of it is, like you said, maybe that guy just doesn't know it. But as a 63, if it's not a 63 and a half, then it would be a 406 car, like you said. Yep. That would be an R code 63. It'd be a 406. Man, if only you knew where one of those was. Uh, right? <laughs> <laughs> a correct date coded 406 hmm it's a real head scratcher yeah that's a rare motor <laughs> yeah i've only ever seen one <laughs> same before i seen that i didn't know it existed so thanks for that yeah no problem <laughs> i didn't know what that was <laughs> um you know, sadly, I would have th figured it was some kind of Chevy, <laughs> just because they had a 409. Oh, I, yeah. Yep. But. Yeah, one of the rare old Effies. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, like we talked about before, the 409 and the Dodge 413 sucked compared to the 406. Yeah. The 409s blew up a lot, if I remember, re you know, reading about them. That's what I remember, is that the 409 you had to be careful with or they blow up. Yep, they struggled with them. They built some kind of a mystery motor or something that's supposed to be pretty hot, but they never really built a lot of them or something. Oh. And they built the 427 after a couple more years or something. What is it about that designation? The 427 Chevy, the 427 Ford, and those are like the ones everybody wants. Yeah, exactly. You know what would be another nice find? and it's because their value just doesn't seem to stick is to find like a beat up old Thunderbird with a 428 in it. I've looked for those. You can find them seven liters. That'd be pretty sick. It would be. And yes, I know what I just said about the R code, but I just want it for the motor. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'd pull that crap. Yep. And the other one that I got, and I'll, when we're done, I'll send it to you. But I did find another R code, but it's a 69, and it's a, a Torino. Um, it's the R code in 69. Was that about 429? I'm not sure. That's what I was going to ask you. Um, I would guess a 3D, 385 series engine, probably a 429. Yeah. But I'll send it to you so you can check it out. But um, right on. It's like a burgundy uh, Torino. Pretty nice. Looked pretty cool, yeah. I thought. But yeah. um, but it might be another one where the original engine was gone. I don't know. I'll yeah. send it to you. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I, you know, and then I was looking at that uh, that 72 Torino over in Minnesota. I still think that's a good buy. I mean, it's, it's essentially, it, it looks, reads, and sounds like my Cutlass. You know, that it's it's in that kind of shape, which is pretty okay. good. But that is good. It's real good, actually. Yeah. We made that better with the bumper change today. <laughs> that was a good-looking project you had going on there. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Does it normally take six hours to change the bumper on a classic car? <laughs> Isn't that four bolts? <laughs> <laughs> Everything always matches right up. Oh, that's why I had to write it up, man. I had to write it up, and I had to take pictures because I, I could not believe my run of bad luck there. <laughs> I just couldn't believe it. About the time I was breaking out the carbide bit, I was laughing. Uh, Metal shavings all over me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, well. You got it done, though. That's good. That's right. You know, and who helped me line it out? Probably JT. JT? Yep. I was under it. Jules was helping me uh, get it up, and uh, Jordan eyeballed it. He used his fingers to set the gap. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't even tell him to do that. <laughs> he just instinctively went over, because he's never done this before. He's never checked panel gap ever. He doesn't even, probably has never thought about it. 
beyond me griping about it from under the car. <laughs> but he used his fingers to set the panel gap, and it was perfect. Yeah, right on. So, uh, good for him. Yeah. He got involved. <laughs> well, he wants that car, so he wants it right. Oh, we were just discussing him getting a job at the local grocery store when he turns 14. <laughs> oh, I hope he does. He doesn't like that idea. He doesn't? No. Uh, he doesn't want to work that. Who does? Exactly. I was just hoping he wanted to. Uh, well, here's the thing. So then after that, once we realize that the car crew's likely canceled for tonight due to the rain and stuff, although I'm still probably going to run down there uh, when we're done here, but just to check it out. Um, we're sitting there, we pull in, and there's two young girl car hops working there. And, uh, I just, I just kind of nudged him. I was like, so you're telling me you wouldn't want to have a job where you have your own money, where you could cruise up in the Cutlass with your buddy, Isaac, you know, and order food and flirt with these girls. I'm saying you can't, you can't picture that. And he goes, well, yeah, I can. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, <laughs> You know, you'd be a lot cooler if it was your money versus running over to me every time and going, hey, Dad, can I have 20 bucks so I can go to the drive-in? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. I told him I'll buy him a piece of crap instead. He said he'd rather walk. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Walking sucks. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. What did you see down there? An old Mercury? Yeah, there was a... I don't think... Because the, the 6667 Comet was very similar to the, uh, the, the Fairlane, of course. And I don't think it was that. I think it was a 65. It's white. And I think I've seen that down there a couple years ago. Uh, it was a really good-looking car. And, of course, I didn't get a picture of it because I was ordering food and he drove off while I was doing that. But, um, yeah, beautiful-looking car. But I noticed Rob didn't have his Camaro down there either, so he might not be planning to do anything tonight. Yeah, uh, showers are still coming through. Yeah. It's just in waves. It's a really – it's weird weather, man. Yep. I mean, it's like you said, it's not horrible. I still got stuff done today. It's just – I don't know. Wasn't what you wanted, I guess. Wow. That wind is really blowing now. It's not snowing. That's all I care about. That's right. <laughs> it show ain't. Yeah, I don't know, man. Well, I'm going to take a ride right over soon and check out your bumper job. <laughs> yeah, it looks great. It's amazing what a nice new chrome bumper will do for the rear end of a car that was painted silver over rust on that uh -huh. bumper. <laughs> yep. What do you think we should do with the old bumper? We could practice cutting and welding on it. Let's nail it to Juke's truck. <laughs> we should. <laughs> or come out, do that, or attach it with a chain to Jordan's bicycle. He could drag it. <laughs> <laughs> drag it around <laughs> oh we could put it on his go-kart <laughs> oh there you go. yeah <laughs> cut the center out of it so it shortened it up a little <laughs> bit and then put it on his go-kart <laughs> that would be hilarious <laughs> look like a guardrail mm -hmm. heck yeah man did you end up uh did you catch the last two weeks of Street Outlaws? I thought Street Outlaws was over. No. Apparently not. Seen that. They ran a Cash Days promotion, which they've been doing for like 20 years now, um, which tells you how young some of those guys were when they started. I think Big Chief was like 20 <laughs> when he started racing in Cash Days. I think he's only 40 now or 41. But, um, yeah, he made it to the finals and lost. Spoiler alert, Daddy Dave won. <laughs> Again, I think that's his fifth time. So, yeah. What's the winnings on that? Uh, thirty-three thousand dollars. Woof. In cash. Yeah. You know what's funny though is a couple guys had some like uh, 
had some issues at the line. Um, there's a guy who's won a ton of these things. His name's Birdman, or that's what they call him. And he runs like this. It's basically a pro mod, um, which I don't really like, but, you know, whatever. They let him run it, so that's their problem. But um, <clears throat> his window fogged up really bad right at the line, and he didn't leave. You know, usually yeah. if that happens, if they take off, it'll clear up. You know, like right after launch, just so as soon as the wind starts circulating in the cab cabin, yeah, and uh, he wouldn't do it. And they ask him after he goes, you know what? He goes thirty three thousand is a nice payday. He goes, but it's not enough to pay for a new car. <laughs> well, he's got a point there. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. And you see, I though, mean, I you're mean, thinking, you're thinking he should have just sent the car. Ah. Yeah. Uh, I no, actually, I kind of agree with him. You know, and, and it, I think that lends a little bit of, or sheds a little light on the fact that these guys have six figures into these cars, easy. And just all the work. Imagine wrecking a car and just knowing what you have to do just to build another one. Right. Eight hours of work, putting a chassis together. So, I know what it costs to get an engine that let's say it makes five, 600 horsepower. We know you can get even 700 horsepower, about 25 grand. You can get a 700, 750 horsepower, big block. Um, you know, you can get them on eBay yeah. even at that power level. These guys are running 3,500 horsepower. Some of them 4,500. How much do those engines cost? Oof. <laughs> I can't imagine. No. And the upkeep. Yeah. You know how many passes they get? How often do they have to rebuild? Um, I think the turbo guys, they get more out of it, but I couldn't give you a number. I know it's a lot more. I think nitrous guys, it's pretty frequent. Yep. Um, and that's why nitrous is kind of getting phased out by a lot of them. They're all going to uh, either superchargers or turbochargers. With turbos, I guess, are the easiest on an engine. Yeah. But uh, – yeah, I don't know, man. It's nuts. And then um, one of them last week, the other interesting thing, or it was two weeks ago now, the guy who drives the Murder Nova, his name's Sean. Um, the actuator in his transmission went out. And what was interesting about that, and I didn't realize this, he said that they don't shift the transmission. The computer does. But because his actuator went out, he had to shift it himself for that race, which was rare for them to have to do that. And I didn't know that. Yeah, I don't know that either. Yeah, so he it's said... It's on their computer. Yeah, the the shift Part points are built main. into the computer and it just shifts it. That's cool. It is, but it's also not. <laughs> <laughs> it's like pulling back the curtain a little too much, man. I don't need to see all that. Well... <laughs> Which, incidentally, he lost the race that he had to shift manually, but he did a really good job. Like, they, they were showing, like, he was pretty close to what the computer can do. So that was good. That restored some of my faith. It was like, okay. Yeah. You know, that's that's good. <laughs> Watching for the light again. Yep. <laughs> yeah, basically, it sounds like, for for at least some of them, and I, and I don't know, I know they all run Rosler transmissions. Um well, almost all of them do, but, um, yeah, I did not know that, that they basically, they have their hand on the trans brake release. Uh -huh. And so when they take off, once they've staged, they release and that, that switch flips up and that releases the trans brake and they launch. I did not know that the computer did the rest. Yeah. And they're basically just steering their way down the track then. I don't know. How do you? I, I don't even know how to feel about that. <laughs> I guess it doesn't matter. I guess when you have that much power, it's more just trying to keep it as straight as possible going down the road so you don't die. Yep. yep. <laughs> keep it everything tuned. Yeah. But they were showing like stress cracks and fractures in those chassis after time, like what happens to them. <laughs> It's nuts, man. Yeah, there's some abuse there. 
Got to build as late as they can. What's that? They got to build them as light as they can. Yeah. Right. And so that's the other thing is they're only running just enough bracing. <laughs> yep. It's not as safe as it could be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and one of them, his door keeps getting sucked off. So I don't know why that is. Um, why that keeps happening. But his passenger door has blown off twice in a row. That's the Murder Nova guy. And I know those are fiberglass doors. Yeah. They might even be carbon fiber at this point. <laughs> well, I bet you. I bet you they are. With and windows, so they're not, you know, it's not a real door. Even though it opens and closes like a real door, it's not. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. That's nuts. That's crazy. Those are the other things. Uh, somewhere in northern Michigan, I saw 57, um, or no. Yeah, 57 Ford Fairlane back half, a drag car with a tilt-up, one-piece fiberglass front end. No drivetrain. Oh. 1500 bucks is all they want for it. Really? Yep. So it has the rear end and the front suspension in it and the brakes, but no engine, no transmission. That'd be a fun little thing to play with. That would be. Even with like a, you don't even have to have that hot of an engine to have a good time. Uh-uh. <laughs> and it's a big tire car too. It's it's back half, so it, I mean it had, you put really really big tires on there. It has really big tires on there. I'll send it to you. Perfect. But uh, I thought that was kind of neat. That uh, is. Someone might have staffed it up by now because that that's been a few weeks. I saw that. But I'm looking everywhere, man. Everywhere. Deals are out there. They're out there. We got to find something. Maybe even a couple somethings. Yep. It'll be a it'll be a good time. A couple road trips, go pick stuff up. Uh huh. Why not? <laughs> Why not us? Why not? On a personal note, outside of muscle and speed. Um, I saw a 72 Duster. It's yellow and black. Slot mags on it. It has a straight six in it, but it's basically been converted to accept a 360 that he has for it. But he wants to sell the car for 3500 It's actually in really good shape. Um, that could be really fun. And here's why. <laughs> Screw the 360. But what if we could find a 440 and a 727 and park that in there? That could yeah. be a really fun car. It would be. And I don't even mean like a super hot setup. I mean like just a motorhome 440 with a 727. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Thinking about it. But uh-huh. I'm also thinking about that Torino in Minnesota. Oh. 72 is the one I want. I don't know why, but you know that the front end to me looks so aggressive. I just I really like the 72. That's the only year that looked like that. Okay. What motor did that have? That had a Cleveland in it. Ooh. Yeah, Cleveland C6, nine inch rear end. That'd be a nice setup. Yeah. It sounds like a good time. <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know, man. I'm going to have to be nicer to Jules. Oh. She's not going to let me buy nothing. <laughs> yeah, that'll happen. You know how that goes. I do. <laughs> yeah. I think that's about all I got, man. Yeah, sounds good. Let's see if the drive in. on. Yeah, I'm going to run down to the drive-in and see, because they run from 6 to 9, so it's really windy, but it's not raining, so. Yeah. Could be a few people there. Yeah. Well, cool, man. We'll catch you later. Have a good one. All right, we're out of here.